eliminations make up a huge part of the Royal Rumble's DNA, especially the one that ends it all. This is the final image fans will have of a particular year's match, the one that will get replayed over and over again, even more so if it's not done well, the chances are you will never see it on WWE TV again. For this list, we're not just talking about the actual final elimination, but also, crucially, the moments that lead up to it. So basically everything that happened after the penultimate elimination. Make sense? Of course it does. We will be ranking them based on how dramatic they were, how well choreographed they were, and how long they will live in the memory of wrestling fans everywhere. Oh, and we're not including the greatest Royal Rumble or any matches that were untelevised or took place outside of the Royal Rumble events. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and this is every final elimination from the Royal Rumble ranked from worst to best. Join us! Number 42, Roman Reigns eliminates Rusev in 2015. That's right, we're kicking off with the 2015 Royal Rumble. Trigger warning, folks. Everyone thought the match was over when Roman Reigns tipped over the authorities Kane and Big Show. The two behemoths then ganged up on Reigns, prompting The Rock to come out and save his cousin, then look very confused as to why everyone was booing him. After all that was sorted, Rusev leapt back into the ring, having never been thrown over the top rope. Oh good, thought everyone, now we can get a proper exciting finish to the rumble. Oh wait, Roman's just eliminated Rusev as well. Well, that was pointless. The sudden nature of the Bulgarian brute's dismissal, plus the fact that he had been made to look like a total chump, frustrated and soured fans on this rumble's true ending. And though this doesn't count towards its overall score, this was also the period of time where Reigns was being shoved down our throats with lethal force, which didn't help things in the moment. Thank God Reigns would get over this setback. It took him a while, but he got there in the end. Number 41, Big John Studd eliminates Ted DiBiase in 1989. 1989 was a big year for the Royal Rumble as it took on a lot of the characteristics still associated with it today. This was the first time the match was given its own pay-per-view, as opposed to the television special it aired on the year before. It was the first time it main evented said pay-per-view, and the first time 30 men entered instead of 20. So with all this going on, it's such a shame that the final elimination was so unbelievably uninspired. The match came down to two men, the heroic Big John Studd and the evil Million Dollar Man who had bought himself the number 30 spot. The final sequence saw Studd hit a big clothesline on DiBiase and then just lob him out over the top rope. That was it. No pomp, no big struggle, just a big lad throwing a smaller lad out of the ring. They tried to make things more interesting by having Virgil run in after the bell, but he was also dispatched with ease. Number 40. Brock Lesnar eliminates The Undertaker in 2003 The 2003 Royal Rumble match isn't really talked about all that much, and I can kind of see why that is. It wasn't a bad match, it just wasn't that memorable. Storylines were advanced in the build-up to WrestleMania 19, but not that much happened that would make a Rumble highlight package, you know? So it's rather fitting that the ending sequence to this match was pretty lacklustre. The Undertaker, who had returned in the number 30 spot after a three-month break, had eliminated Batista, who got very cross at the dead man. The animal snuck back in but was quickly dealt with, however, this allowed Brock Lesnar to sneak up behind Taker and tip him over the ropes to win the match. This all happened very quickly, there was no real drama to it, no time for the crowd to get properly invested. Thankfully, the match Lesnar would have at Mania would erase the memory of his ropey Rumble win, as it was his legendary WWE title triumph over Kurt Angle. Just don't mention the shooting star press. Number 39, Ronda Rousey eliminates Charlotte Flair in 2022. Our first women's match takes us back to 2022, a year where neither Rumble match was particularly inspiring, and both winners failed to win their respective champions championships at WrestleMania. Good job, guys. Ronda Rousey had returned to WWE after a near three-year break from the grab game, coming in toward the end of the Rumble and disposing of several wrestlers before coming face-to-face -face with perennial rival and fellow controversial figure Charlotte Flair. The two women who had last met in the main event of WrestleMania 35 looked at each other for ages, staring daggers into each other's souls. Then, after all that build-up, Flair ran at Rousey, who just got out of the way and then flung the queen out. Right? That's it, is it? Good. Great. Grand. This felt like a much more epic finale had been suggested to both women, but they just went, nah, and condensed it down to a few seconds. Whether this was done to protect Rousey upon her return or some other reason is unclear, but what is clear is that this was not the blockbuster ending Rowdy Ronda needed to get the fans back on her side. 
Number 38, Hulk Hogan eliminates Earthquake in 1991. In 1991, Hulk Hogan marked his place in history by becoming the first man to win not one, but two Royal Rumbles. He did it back to back years too, because of course he bloody did. Whilst we won't be seeing his first victory for a little while, this one more than deserves its low billing, because, well, it just sort of happened. The fourth ever Rumble came down to the red and yellow and his fierce rival at the time, Earthquake, a man who was somehow only 27 years old when this match took place. Tough paper round. Quake had been knocked down by Hogan, who was doing his trademark grandstanding and hot dogging as his opponent slowly rose to his feet. Hogan then started running before realizing that he was in the wrong place, changing direction and giving his foe the old heave ho. This was not that interesting. There was no last minute resurgence from the baddie to add some extra drama, just Hogan looking like he was going to eliminate him and then doing so incredibly easily. The crowd being molten hot certainly did help it, but in terms of what actually happened in the ring, this quake fails to register. Number 37, John Cena eliminates Ryback in 2013. Remember when Ryback nearly won the Royal Rumble? Just imagine that timeline. Well, in the world we live in, instead of some domain of twisted fantasy, the big guy had just one thing standing between him and WrestleMania 29. Unfortunately, that thing was John Cena. Hellbent on getting his Mania rematch with The Rock, Cena overcame the monolith and won his second Rumble match in one of the least remarkable ways possible. Ryback had Cena on his shoulders, ready to lawn dart him over the top rope, when Cena slipped down and sent his adversary flying in one swift motion. Well, that's how it should have gone anyway. Instead, Cena dropped to his feet, then clumsily tried to get Ryback over the top rope before he finally, awkwardly, came crashing down onto the ground below. Even if this spot had gone smoothly, it still would have been pretty uninspired. Ryback looked like a giant anus for falling for such an obvious ploy, and Cena gained nothing by outwitting the wrestling version of King Kong. A thoroughly bland ending to a thoroughly bland rumble to set up a thoroughly bland main event at a thoroughly bland WrestleMania. Number 36, The Rock eliminates Big Show in 2000. The 2000 Royal Rumble came down to The Rock and The Big Show in his Rumble debut, which began the next 20 years of insipid but how can anyone eliminate him lines on commentary. Show looked to have the match won, however, when he went to throw the People's Champion out, his prey pounced using his core strength to reverse the move and send the giant to the outside instead. This was genius, the beloved babyface had overcome the heinous heel using a combination of brains and brawn. It was flawless. Until someone checked the tapes. It turned out that while sending the world's largest athletes over the ropes, The Rock's feet had both clearly touched the floor first. This meant that Rocky's win came with a massive asterisk, as he had technically lost the match. Again, this would have been a perfect finish had things not gone so wrong. At least Show got his Mania main event, I suppose. It was a load of crap, but he got it. Number 35, Edge eliminates John Cena in 2010. Ten years before his big return from retirement, Edge was making a similar shocking comeback at the 2010 Royal Rumble, emerging at number 29 months ahead of schedule after tearing his Achilles tendon. It all came down to the rated R superstar and his perennial rival John Cena after big match John got rid of Batista. Cena had been in the match a long while, so was catching his breath on the ropes whilst Edge waited across the ring. And he waited, and he waited, and he waited. After Cena finally turned back around, Edge pounced, only for his opponent to catch him with a kick. Cena tried to take advantage, but then Edge just got on top again and chucked him out for the win. So, what was the point of all that build-up if Edge was just going to win the thing anyway? Honestly, the amount of time between Batista's elimination and the final bit of action was comically long, only for the whole thing to end on a damp note. In terms of Edge Rumble wins, his other one was far superior. But we'll get to that later. Ooh, what a tease. Number 34, Stone Cold Steve Austin eliminates The Rock in 1998. The 1998 Royal Rumble pay-per-view is probably best known for the main event casket match between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker, in which HBK suffered the back injury that would lead to his initial four-year retirement. In terms of the Rumble itself, you've got Mick Foley entering as all three of his alter egos, and uh, that's basically it. It was a pretty average match. 
It did have a very interesting final two, though, as when The Rock eliminated Farouk, it left just him and Stone Cold Steve Austin remaining in the ring. The two future rivals had a little bit of back and forth, which included The Rock narrowly avoiding elimination before getting back in the ring, eating a stunner, and then getting chucked out for good. If it's high drama you're after, then this is not the Rumble ending for you. It's extremely functional, but doesn't really hold up on an isolated viewing, even if the crowd do go absolutely mental when the Texas Rattlesnake wins. Luckily for Stone Cold, he had two other chances to provide an interesting ending to the Rumble, both of which would be way better than this run-of-the-mill affair. Number 33, Asuka eliminates Nikki Bella in 2018. The first ever Women's Royal Rumble in 2018 came down to two very worthy finalists. There was Asuka, the undefeated warrior empress on the run of her life, and then there was Nikki Bella, the semi-retired reality TV star. Okay, maybe not everyone was that worthy. The finale to this epic first match saw both women spill out onto the apron. Nikki clocked Asuka with a forearm, who then retaliated with a kick to the knee, sending the former Divas champion crashing to the floor and making WWE history in the process. Whilst this spot gets points for its creativity, this was the first time a Rumble match had ended with both participants on the apron, it was very sudden and a little anticlimactic, as it only took one move from Asuka to win the day. Also, the kick barely touched Nikki's knees, which certainly didn't help in terms of suspending disbelief. Number 32, Becky Lynch eliminates Charlotte Flair in 2019. One year on from Asuka and Nikki's not-so-dramatic climax, two women who could definitely believably win the Rumble match were its final two. Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch had been closely linked forever, but even more so since the latter's transformation into the man the year before. Now, with a little help from Fit Finley, Becky was in the Rumble and squaring off with her former friend turned bitter rival. The story of this final portion of the match was linked Lynch's injured leg, which Charlotte was trying to use to get the win. Instead, Lynch overcame her wonky wheel, managed to get Charlotte onto the apron, then knock her out with a forearm to punch her ticket to WrestleMania. This ending sequence was fine. Nothing went wrong and it was well executed, but there was just nothing really special about it. No pizzazz, no razzle dazzle, no bish bash bosh, no. Alright, you get the idea. Hey, at least Becky won and got to main event WrestleMania. What was Charlotte's prize for coming second? Oh, it was to main event the same WrestleMania. Number 31, Shinsuke Nakamura eliminates Roman Reigns in 2018. Instead of giving way to the first ever women's match in 2018, the men in WWE put on one of the best Rumble matches in years. Way to show everyone up, boys. After a fantastic Final Six old versus new moment, it all came down to Roman Reigns versus Shinsuke Nakamura, with both men heavily rumored to be involved in world title matches at the Showcase of the Immortals. After a bit of give and take, the two warriors started going for finishers, with Nakamura nailing a Kinshasa before popping up and tossing Reigns over the ropes to win. Did he throw him over the ropes where the hard cam was? or even where a cameraman was standing. Nope, he threw him out via the far side of the ring, leading to one of the most undramatic ending camera angles in Rumble history. Come on, Shinsuke, rookie error. The end sequence was fine, but nothing too original, with the real joy here coming from Naka's big win. I mean, it's just a shame about the subsequent Mania match with AJ Styles and the feud that followed and basically the rest of his WWE career in general. Number 30, Randy Orton eliminates Roman Reigns in 2017. 2017 will go down as the final year to host just one Royal Rumble match, as the menfolk battled it out to see who would go to WrestleMania 33 to compete for a world title. In hindsight, this probably should have been Chris Jericho's night, setting up a much-anticipated match against then-Universal Champion Kevin Owens, but Orton got the honor instead for the second time in his career. The Viper was backed up by his boss at the time, Bray Wyatt, as they looked to take out Roman Reigns. However, the big dog sent Bray flying, leaving Randy to do the job alone. Reigns went to spear Orton, but forgot that his finisher put him in the perfect position to take an RKO. The Apex Predator countered with his signature move before staggering a little bit and then running to clothesline Roman out of the ring. The spear into RKO spot was cool, but on the whole, this was a fairly unremarkable elimination to end what was a fairly unremarkable Rumble match. 
I mean, it had James Ellsworth in it. Says it all, really. Number 29, Drew McIntyre eliminates Roman Reigns in 2020. If you are wondering why Roman Reigns kept coming second in Royal Rumbles, it's because WWE loved to put the fear up people that he would steal the spotlight from their favorites. To give them their credit, it usually worked. In 2020, the fan favorite going up against Reigns was Drew McIntyre, who had just made a star out of himself by eliminating Brock Lesnar earlier in the match. After Roman eliminated Edge to sort out the final two, both finalists teased winning before the Scotsman countered a spear into a Claymore kick to stun the future tribal chief, who was then swiftly ejected from the ring as the crowd went wild. The template for this final elimination was exactly the same as 2017. Reigns nearly eliminates the other person, goes for a spear, gets caught with a finisher. What makes this one ever so slightly better is that A, the Claymore into spear looks slightly better, and B, Drew didn't stumble whilst going to eliminate Reigns. If this sounds like we're splitting hairs, that is because we are, but one of these had to come before the other, so cut some slack, will you? Number 28, Triple H eliminates Kurt Angle in 2002. The 2002 Royal Rumble was famously won by Triple H after the game made his big return after taking the best part of a year out to heal from a torn quad suffered during a match on Raw. The final four of this Rumble was an all-time classic comprised of Trips, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, and Mr. Perfect in 2002? In 2002? And he helped eliminate Austin? Fair play. Anyway, after Hunter eliminated Hennig, it was all down to the two men who had once vied for Stephanie McMahon's affections. After a bit of a scuffle, the H-Man ran at Kurt to try and eliminate him, only for the Olympian to duck down and body drop his opponent over the top rope for the win. Or so he thought. Triple H had actually survived the scare, then got back in the ring to attack a celebrating angle before clotheslining him out to win the match for real this time. The initial fake-out was alright, as there would have been a few people in the building who genuinely thought Angle had won, but this was far from the most thrilling or complex of Rumble endings. Number 27, Brock Lesnar eliminates Drew McIntyre in 2022. The 2022 Men's Royal Rumble is largely considered to be one of the worst the format has ever produced. It was also the final Rumble during Vince McMahon's era of WWE creative, go figure. After a final five that included both Shane McMahon and Bad Bunny, it all came down to two old friends, Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar. Friends might be a strong word here, to be honest. The Beast, who had entered the match as a surprise in the number 30 spot, had been throwing out fools left, right, and center, and it was up to the man who had beat him at WrestleMania 36 to try to stop him. Did he do this? No, he did not. The pair had the most testosterone-fueled stare-down in human history before briefly throwing hands. Drew dodged an F5, Lesnar dodged a Claymore before scooping the kilt wearer up for one final heave-ho over the top to end the match. Had this sequence gone on a little longer, this entry may have come a little higher. It was all over relatively quickly, which is a bit of a shame because these two had a really great thing going for a minute there. Number 26, Stone Cold Steve Austin eliminates Bret Hart in 1997. The ending to the 1997 Royal Rumble isn't interesting because of any of the moves involved, but rather because of the storyline circumstances surrounding it. Stone Cold Steve Austin should have been the fourth to last person out of the Rumble match as Bret Hart eliminated him clear as day, but the referees in attendance were too busy dealing with a scrapping Mick Foley and Terry Funk on the outside. Like the little git he was, Austin got back in the ring, took out Undertaker and Vader, and then dumped out the Hitman shortly after he had eliminated Diesel. As the refs had no idea the Texas Rattlesnake was supposed to be out, he was declared the winner. The actual moment of Austin eliminating Hart wasn't exactly exhilarating, but this was the first time WWE had booked anything like this to happen during the Rumble. The intrigue around what was going to happen to Austin's win elevated what was otherwise a fairly dull ending, and the company definitely gets points for trying something new for the 10th ever Rumble match. And I mean, the fact that this played into Austin and Hart's classic Mania 13 match definitely helps things a little bit too. Number 25, Mr. McMahon eliminates Stone Cold Steve Austin in 1999. 
Ah, the 1999 Royal Rumble, aka the hour-long build-up to the hottest star in the company being outfoxed by a middle-aged businessman. The final two were also the first two, as Stone Cold and Mr. McMahon had begun the Rumble as part of their epic rivalry. Just when it looked like Austin was going to get one over on his nemesis, WWE and corporate champion The Rock came down to ringside to taunt the man he would eventually lose the title to. This distraction gave Vince enough time to recover and eliminate the bionic redneck for one of the biggest upset wins in WWE history. There are two ways of approaching this. One is to dismiss the whole thing as self-centered, egocentric booking from Vince and that Austin repeatedly teasing throwing him out made him look like a massive dingus. Another is to admit that this was beyond shocking at the time and that McMahon, a non-wrestler, actually does a pretty damn decent job in getting Austin over the top rope. We decided that somewhere in the middle was about right, but this continues to be one of the most divisive rumble endings of all time. Number 24, Randy Orton eliminates Triple H in 2009. Randy Orton's first Rumble win from 2009 ended up being a bit of a waste of time, as not only did he lose his title match at WrestleMania 25, but he lost it to the man he had eliminated to book it in the first place. The final four of the 2009 Rumble saw Triple H staring down the barrel of a three-way beatdown from Legacy, made up of Orton and his two goons, Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase Jr. However, because he is the cerebral assassin, he managed to overcome two of them quite easily. The game made swift work of DiBiase and Rhodes, thinking he had eliminated Orton a few moments earlier. Instead, the Apex Predator had managed to cling on, and after the Cerebral Assassin had tossed out Rhodes, the Legacy Leader snuck up behind him and sent him tumbling for the surprise win. Though this final elimination only lasted a couple of seconds, everything else around it was fast-paced and exciting, with Orton's win coming, if you'll pardon the pun, from out of nowhere. Hopefully Randy enjoyed this moment, because what came after it would turn out to be a huge huge disappointment. Number 23, Batista eliminates Roman Reigns in 2014. Boo! Sorry, that's just a force of habit whenever I talk about the 2014 Royal Rumble. This show will forever be known as the night Daniel Bryan wasn't a participant, causing pretty much the entire crowd to turn hard and shoot everything else down with a relentless stream of unhappy noises. The boos only got worse when fans realized that Batista, a returning part-timer, was going to win the thing, which is why they started rallying around eventual runner-up Roman Reigns instead. Oh, how different things would be in just a year's time, eh? Not one to let a vocal crowd stand in their way, Reigns and Batista put on a pretty decent decent showing as the Rumble drew to a close, throwing their considerable weight around to create a big boy battle for the ages. Batista speared Reigns only for the young gun to do the same to the veteran moments later. Sadly, as Reigns went to chuck Batista out, Big Dave switched momentum and ended up winning his second Rumble match as the booze intensified around him. A decent little ending, but one that was over far too quickly to be considered truly great. Number 22, Charlotte Flair eliminates Shayna Baszler in 2020. Remember when everyone was certain that a recently called up Shayna Baszler was going to win the Royal Rumble, go on to face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, and then win the Raw Women's Championship in a bloody great match? Well, one out of three ain't bad. It all started to go wrong for the Queen of Spades when she lost the 2020 Women's Rumble match to Charlotte Flair, who would also slow the momentum of Rhea Ripley down in NXT with her title shots. Baszler thought she had done away with the Queen, but Flair had managed to hold on using her mighty upper body strength. When Shayna went back to try and finish the job, Flair flipped herself up, hooked Baszler's body with her legs, and pulled her to the outside in one swift motion. This came a little out of nowhere, Baszler had just eliminated Beth Phoenix a few moments earlier. However, this was certainly a unique way to end the Rumble match, one that hadn't been seen before, and one that required plenty of skill and timing from the two women involved. Shayna still should have won, though. Number 21, Alberto Del Rio eliminates Santino Morella in 2011. In the land of kayfabe, Santino Morella, the wrestler famous for having a unibrow and pronouncing words in a funny way, once almost won the Royal Rumble. After Alberto Del Rio eliminated Randy Orton in the 2011 Rumble, the one that had 40 people in it and was totally not a slog to get through at all, the Mexican star thought that he had won the match. As it turned out, Santino had never been properly eliminated and had been biding his time outside the ring waiting for his moment. The Milan Miracle Sprung launched a vicious Cobra attack on Del Rio as the crowd went bonkers. 
Sadly, it wasn't to be, as Santino's attempt to eliminate his foe was reversed and Del Rio was declared the winner after all. In terms of memorable Rumble finales, this one is up there towards the very top, but it does kind of undermine the entire tradition of the match that a man with a snake sock over his hand nearly won the thing by lying down on the floor. Still, this is ridiculously funny, and Santino would have made a damn sight better winner than Del Rio, with the power of hindsight and all that, eh? Number 20, Batista eliminates John Cena in 2005. Aliens could have landed in the middle of the bloody ring during the 2005 Royal Rumble match, and this night would still only be remembered for Vince McMahon blowing out both his quads walking to and from the squared circle. I mean, just look at him, sitting on his backside like a grumpy toddler. <laughs> Hilarious. The reason for this very funny mishap was that the two final participants in the match, John Cena and Batista, had somehow managed to accidentally eliminate themselves at the exact same time. This made Vince, watching from Gorilla, very cross indeed, and the rest is history. After the double elimination came a period of desperately trying to figure out what to do as both participants threw the other out to stake their claim. In the end, the final stretch of the Rumble was restarted, and Batista quickly hit a spinebuster on Cena before scoring the definitive win once and for all. As messy as this may sound, watching all this drama play out was utterly compelling. It made the Rumble feel real, because in this precise moment, it was. I guess it loses points for being a total fluke, but what a fluke it was. Number 19. Bret Hart and Lex Luger eliminate each other in 1994. Eleven years prior to Cena and Batista accidentally lobbing themselves over the top rope at the same time, two more big names from the company had done exactly the same thing, except on purpose this time. The story goes that Vince McMahon didn't know who he wanted to face Yokozuna at WrestleMania 10. In the end, he let the fans decide by booking Bret Hart and Lex Luger to be eliminated from the Royal Rumble at the exact same time. Luger had Hart up for some sort of slam, only for the hitman to fight back, eventually dropping to his feet and pushing the owner of the Lex Express out of the ring. Only problem was, he was still holding on to Brett, causing both superstars to go tumbling to their doom. This was the first time something like this had ever happened in the Rumble, and this final spot went off without a hitch. Seriously, credit goes to both Hart and Luger for making this look so natural and smooth. In the end, both men got their shot at Yoko on the grandest stage, but only the Hitman emerged from WrestleMania 10 with the World Championship. Number 18. John Cena eliminates Triple H in 2008 For one brief moment in 2008, John Cena, the most hated man in wrestling at the time, got cheered like he had just ended world hunger. This was off the back of his incredible return during the 2008 Rumble match, when he stepped foot into the ring at number 30 after coming back several months ahead of schedule from pectoral surgery. Once the big shock had worn off, Cena focused on the task at hand, which was ousting Triple H and going to WrestleMania. Cena and the game knew each other all too well by this point, having co-headlined Mania 22 just two years earlier, so were able to put on a glorious mini-match in the final stages of the Rumble. From finisher dodging to narrow escapes to a big double down, this sequence had it all before Cena eliminated Trips with a big old AA to the outside that Hunter was definitely feeling the morning after. There have been better mini-matches to end Rumbles, sure, but this one was still pretty darn good, even if the crowd had gone back to booing Cena like he was a disgraced politician by the time he won. Fickle. Number 17. Sheamus eliminates Chris Jericho in 2012. Chris Jericho has spent more time than anyone else in the Royal Rumble match, with a total of almost five hours across his 11 appearances, and he still hasn't managed to win the bloody thing. What's more, there have been two years where he should have been the winner, 2017, which we mentioned earlier, and here in 2012. Y2J made it to the final two alongside Sheamus, with whom he proceeded to have an excellent mini-match. It was full of near misses and big crowd-popping moments. The end came when the Irishman caught a codebreaker attempt and planted Jericho onto the apron, following up with a bro kick to seal the win. There was some really nice stuff in this exchange, as both parties have excellent chemistry with one another, and it's always good to see a Rumble match actually end with somebody's finisher rather than just a clothesline or a shove. 
Still, I stand by my statement that Jericho should have won here. Both men went on to have world title matches at WrestleMania 28 anyway, so why not just give Chris his due? Hey, at least his Mania match lasted longer than 18 seconds. Number 16, Hulk Hogan eliminates Mr. Perfect in 1990. By the year 1990, there had been two Rumble matches, one of which had been on pay-per-view, so naturally Hulk Hogan decided it was time for a real star to win one, brother dude Jack. The Hulkster won his first of two Rumbles in 1990, in the days before a WrestleMania title shot was the prize. Hogan was actually the world champion in this match, and an encounter with Intercontinental Champion The Ultimate Warrior was what set those two up for their titanic clash at Mania 6. Warrior wasn't Hogan's last hurdle, though, as that duty fell to Mr. Perfect, who some claim had been booked to originally win the Rumble before Terrible Terry got his way. Ever the professional, Kurt Hennig decided to give one hell of a performance, especially in how he was finally gotten rid of. After some contractually mandated grandstanding from Mr. Bolea, he grabbed Perfect by the singlets, got in a good run-up, and then hurled him over the corner turnbuckle. Hennig went zooming over the ropes, executing a beautiful flip bump that could have gone horribly wrong, but ended up being, well, perfect. Losing the name. Number 15, Yokozuna eliminates Randy Savage in 1993. Of all the entries on this list, this one is probably going to cause the most controversy. The 1993 Royal Rumble was the first one to have a WrestleMania World Championship match as its prize, a trend that is still going over 30 years later. Unfortunately, the match itself was a bit bleh, with WWE really hurting for star power at the time. No offense to the Berserker or Damian Demento, by the way. Luckily, the match came down to two stars the audience had actually heard of, Macho Man Randy Savage and the God Gantuan Yoko Zuna. Savage had managed to get Yoko onto his back, allowing him to hit his trademark flying elbow drop. And then comes the controversial bit. He tried to pin him. And lest we forget, in the immortal words of Gorilla Monsoon, pinfalls don't count. Yoko responded to this lapse in judgment by launching Savage up into the air, sending him clattering over the ropes to the outside. A seriously impressive visual, one that got over the sumo wrestler's incredible power, but it also made Macho look like a complete and utter lunatic. Which I mean, yeah. Still, I think it's funny, and what could be more important than that, eh? Number 14, Bianca Belair eliminates Rhea Ripley in 2021. Prior to the 2021 Royal Rumble, Bianca Belair was a highly talented yet criminally underutilized part of the WWE roster. That all changed when she came from the number three spot to win the whole thing, lasting almost an hour in a true star-making performance. Not that there was anyone there to see this as it was pandemic times, but let the woman have her moment, will you? Belair's dance partner for the final stretch of the match was Rhea Ripley in the days before she had discovered black hair dye or her fondness for men with mullets. After both women worked together to eliminate Charlotte Flair, they put on a mini-match that included a highly stressful spot where both women dangled perilously close to the floor off the top rope. In the end, Bianca got the better of the Aussie after a blistering final exchange of moves and reversed moves, but both women showed that they were in for a very bright future. And wouldn't you know it, just a few years later, both of them are two of the biggest stars on the roster. Number 13, Ric Flair eliminates Sid Justice in 1992. When discussion turns to the greatest rumbles of all time, 1992 inevitably comes up. It's usually mentioned by the oldest person in the group, aka me, desperately attempting to cling on to their youth. The night Ric Flair won the Rumble and the world title stands as a stellar example of long-form storytelling in wrestling, as the Nature Boy rode the highs and lows of an hour's worth of drama as Bobby Heenan provided the perfect soundtrack on commentary. That said, Flair should have split the belt in two and given half to Hulk Hogan, because he played a massive part in helping him win. After Sid Justice eliminated Hogan, completely fairly I might add, the world's musliest sore loser responded by holding Sid's arm over the top rope. This allowed Flair to swoop in and tip him over for the win, eventually. They sort of bungled the ending slightly, which was a real shame. Had this moment gone exactly as planned, it would have been much higher up the list, but even as it stands, it's a dramatically character-driven ending to a rumble that was all about big characters. Also, screw Bash at the Beach 96, this is Hogan's heel turn. Number 12, Rey Mysterio eliminates Randy Orton in 2006. 
As soon as WWE made it clear that Rey Mysterio was competing in the 2006 Rumble for the honor of his fallen friend Eddie Guerrero, fans knew they'd better strap in for an emotional roller coaster ride. Going all the way from number two, Mysterio lasted a then record 62 minutes to go all the way and win the big one for his recently departed pal in one of the most emotional Royal Rumble wins of all time. His final elimination would be the man who would continue to be a thorn in his side right up until WrestleMania 22, the effortlessly evil Randy Orton. After Mysterio got rid of Triple H, the game pulled Ray under the bottom rope and blasted him into the steel steps, effectively rendering him unconscious. All Orton had to do was pick up the pieces, but this underdog still had some bark left. Whilst on Orton's shoulders, Ray managed to readjust himself into a Hurricane Rana position, using his momentum to hurl Randy out instead as the crowd erupted with joy. A well-worked ending that fit Ray's persona to perfection, this was the best way to cap off a truly special match. Number 11. Seth Rollins Eliminates Braun Strowman in 2019 in 2019, Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins became the first married couple to win Royal Rumble matches on the same night. Although they weren't married by this point, in fact, I'm not even sure they were dating. Damn it, now I need to think of a new fact. Before I do that though, let me tell you about how the Messiah won his Rumble by slaying the Goliath to his David, Braun Strowman. These two had a great closing sequence full of big exciting moves like choke slams and super kicks before the action spilled over onto the apron. Rollins managed to shove Strowman into the ring post, take him out of the knee, and then deliver a thunderous stomp to spike the monster among men's head and earn himself a big mania payday. There were a lot of moving parts to this ending, and they weren't just punches and kicks as they are with some Rumble mini matches. It took three big moves to put Strowman down, keeping him strong, and Rollins was able to use his superior ring IQ to creatively dispatch a much larger foe. Hopefully that excellent description makes up for my fact being wrong. Number 10. Stone Cold Steve Austin Eliminates Kane in 2001 the other Rumble, often touted as the best ever, is 2001, a match that showcased the Attitude Era at its wild, crazy, and bloody best. From the hardcore section to the epic Brothers of Destruction team-up to Drew Carey, this match had just about everything, and it also marks the third and final time the Rumble was won by a certain bald-headed, foul-mouthed Texan. Austin's path to victory was not easy, as he had to go through a man who had just set the record for the most eliminations in a single Rumble match. Match, Kane. Austin, who had been attacked by Triple H before officially entering the match, used every trick in the book to slay the devil's favorite demon, including hoofing him right in his big red plums. He then delivered three of the sickest chair shots you will ever see before running up to deliver one final clothesline to book himself a spot in the main event of WrestleMania X7. Whilst the final spot wasn't spectacular, the visual of a battered and bloodied Austin swinging that chair like a man possessed is iconic. It made Kane look like an absolute beast, and Austin look like a mighty hero for finally conquering him. Number 9. Rhea Ripley Eliminates Liv Morgan in 2023 You like wrestlers on the apron, do you? Have three of them. The final of the 2023 Women's Rumble saw Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, and Asuka all find themselves in no man's land, or should that be no woman's land? Asuka went to spray Ripley with mist, but Mammy ducked, and the mysterious fluid went into Morgan's face instead. Ripley then eliminated Asuka with the worst 619 ever, but luckily that doesn't count towards this ranking. The Aussie looked to have the match won until a blinded Morgan hit a desperation codebreaker, sending the Judgment Day member staggering backwards, narrowly avoiding both of her feet hitting the floor. Morgan was unable to capitalize though, so Ripley reached up with her legs and pulled Liv off the apron to win. Using the mist really elevated the drama of this moment as it added an entirely new layer to proceedings that fans had never seen before. The fact that Ripley chose to take on such a risky spot, despite having been in the match since the beginning, also deserves to be highlighted. I mean, if that were me, I would have definitely slipped off the apron and, let's face it, probably wet myself in the process. Number 8. Edge Eliminates Randy Orton in 2021 one year on from his surprise return in the very same match and 11 years to the day that he won the 2010 events, Edge won his second Royal Rumble, and he did so after drawing numero uno. 
The rated R superstar outlasted everyone, finally eliminating Seth Rollins to prove that there was still some fuel in the old timer's tank. But wait a second, by my maths, there have only been 28 eliminations in this match. Where's the final? Oh my god, it's Randy Orton! The legend killer, who had started the match alongside Edge but had been taken out much earlier in the night, had picked his moment perfectly, waiting all that time to strike at his former foe and surely win the match. But the wily veteran turned the tables on the Snake Man, reversing his attempt to eliminate him and chucking him over instead. Orton's sudden return and the fear that he was going to steal the victory only for Edge to save it right at the last second was the highest of high drama, all packed into about 10 seconds of TV time. Number 7. Jim Duggan Eliminates One Man Gang in 1988 it turns out that even after years and years of trying, very few Rumble endings have been able to top the very first one. The 1988 Royal Rumble, which was shown for free on the USA Network, only featured 20 men, the final two of which were the evil one-man gang and everyone's favorite wood-waving patriot, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Ho! The future Akeem, let's not talk about that now, beat the red, white, and blue out of Duggan, squashing his much smaller opponent up against the ropes before moving in for the kill. He charged at Hacksaw only for the noble babyface to drop the top rope at the very last second to send Gang out of the ring via his own momentum. A simple ending, yes, but one that still looks great today. It was timed to perfection, with each man playing their part, but especially Gang, who took one hell of a bump for a man the size of your average minivan. Even after all these years, no other rumble has ended with a low bridge, possibly because they don't want to repeat themselves, but possibly because Duggan and the gang got it spot on the first time. Number 6. Shawn Michaels Eliminates Diesel in 1996 We've seen her a few times already, but the first time a Royal Rumble ended via someone's finisher was when Shawn Michaels kicked his good friend Kevin Nash square in the mouth. The 1996 Rumble came down to a final four of Michaels, Diesel, Karma, and the British Bulldog. After HBK got rid of Davy Boy, Karma knocked him out of the ring, or at least he would have done had Michaels not been able to hold on to the top rope. Like the sneaky little feline he is, Michael skinned the cat, which is what it's called when you pull yourself up over the ropes upside down, just as Diesel got rid of Karma. Thinking he had won, Big Daddy Cool turned around to celebrate, only to eat a face full of sweet chin music and get sent packing. In terms of an ending rumble sequence involving multiple players, you will not find anything smoother than this. Honestly, it's just all timed out perfectly and, most importantly of all, makes the winner look like a genius. Number 5. Triple H Eliminates Dean Ambrose in 2016 for only the second time in history, the WWE Championship was up for grabs in the Royal Rumble when Roman Reigns was forced to defend his title from the number one spot at the request of those dastardly McMahons. Reigns survived until the final three, admittedly after taking a nap for about half the match, which also consisted of his best bud Dean Ambrose and his sworn enemy Triple H. It was the game who got rid of the big dog, ensuring that there would be a new world champion and creating some very high stakes for the final stretch. After nearly eliminating Helmsley a few times, Ambrose's luck ran out when he was caught with a knee, allowing the head of the authority to slow backdrop him out of the ring and pick up his 14th world title. The emotional ride fans went on from Reigns being eliminated to Ambrose nearly winning to the villainous Triple H crushing their dreams was superbly paced, exactly what a rumble of this magnitude needed. And hey, it also led to that amazing Trips vs. Reigns match at WrestleMania 32. Can you sense the sarcasm? Number 4. Chris Benoit Eliminates Big Show in 2004 WWE would, of course, like us all to forget that this Rumble match ever happened, but unfortunately, it was really bloody good. It was, of course, won by Chris Benoit, who started at number 1 and used his incredible tenacity and fighting spirit to last until the end. For a man who many believed had been held back because of his size, there could be no more fitting final monster to slay than the company's resident big nasty bastard, The Big Show. The world's largest athlete looked to have things wrapped up when he went to press slam Benoit over the top rope, but the rabid Wolverine countered into a front face lock that would have floored most normal men. 
Instead, Sho just plonked Benoit down on the apron, but the rabid Wolverine wasn't letting go. Slowly but surely, Benoit teased his rival over the top rope, holding on with all his might until finally Sho went crashing down to the floor. An exhausted Benoit had gone the distance. An outstanding ending that proved Brain was stronger than Brawn, this was the perfect way for a character as cerebral as Benoit to win this type of match. Number 3. Cody Rhodes eliminates Gunter in 2023 Adrenaline in my soul, Rumble won by Cody Rhodes! For the first time in Rumble history, the final two left in the match were the ones who had started at number 1 and number 30. Gunter had been in since the start, breaking the record for longevity in the first place, while Cody, who was supposed to be the babyface, had just swanned in at the last second. Not quite sure how that makes sense, but here we are. After Rhodes had eliminated Logan Paul, it came down to him and the Intercontinental Champion. What followed was an epic match within a match, as the two men waged war for the next seven minutes, which was practically unheard of in the Rumble. To sit here and recap it all would be to do it a disservice, but come on, it was Rhodes and Gunter, you know it was excellent. Eventually, the American Nightmare outlasted Der Ring General to win the match, punch his ticket to WrestleMania, and finally finish the star. Oh, wait, never mind. Let's just move on to number two, shall we? Number two, The Undertaker eliminates Shawn Michaels in 2007. Cody and Gunter put on a great mini-match in 2023, but WWE likely got the idea from what two Hall of Famers produced 16 years earlier. After Shawn Michaels eliminated both Randy Orton and Edge, he set up a dramatic showdown with one of his all-time great rivals, The Undertaker. As both men were relatively fresh, Michaels had come in at number 23 and Taker at number 30, they had plenty of energy left for an epic finale. Over the course of the next seven minutes, these legends threw everything they had at each other to etch their names into the history books. Taker nearly eliminated Michaels, Michaels nearly eliminated Taker, and it continued like that until the dead man countered Sweet Chin music to dump HBK out the ring and win his first and only Rumble match. There will be some who prefer the Cody Gunter ending because of how wrestling has evolved since 07, but HBK and the dead man did this ending first and did it so well that nobody else was bold enough to try it for nearly two decades. He may have lost here, but in terms of the all time best, the showstopper takes the crown. Number 1. Shawn Michaels eliminates the British Bulldog in 1995 The 1995 Royal Rumble is quite the contradiction, because despite being one of the worst Rumbles ever, if not the worst, it contains one of the most iconic eliminations the match has ever seen. This was the first time that two men who started the Rumble also finished it, as Shawn Michaels squared off against the British Bulldog for a place on the Mania 11 card. With one last blast of strength, Davy Boy clotheslined Michaels over the ropes, winning the match for the first time. Or so we thought. As Bulldog was celebrating on the turnbuckle, his music playing and everything, Michaels nipped back in the ring and pushed him out. It transpired that only one of Sean's feet had hit the floor, meaning that while everyone else was cheering, Michaels was still in the match. In terms of exploiting the Rumble's rules for maximum drama, it does not get any better than this. Everyone sold Davies' win to perfection, and Sean's character was tailor-made for pulling this sort of stunt off. The ending to the 1995 Royal Rumble remains one of the greatest moments in the match's entire history, even if the rest of it was gash.